So first thing I want to do is just draw this number in the complex plane. So let's let our plane, oops, let our plane be over here. And first I'm just going to consider the number z equals four plus i, or four minus i, excuse me. And then we'll find its square root. So that means the real component is one, two, three, four. The imaginary component is negative i. So that's four, that's negative i. So this point right here is the point four minus i in the complex plane. Now, instead of looking at it in component form, I want to look at it in polar form. So I'm just going to draw a line segment there, connecting it to the pole. The pole is the origin. And that right there has a radius and an angle, which we can find. The radius of that thing is just going to be the square root of 4 squared plus negative 1 squared, right? because that's negative 1i. That's what 16 plus 1 is 17. So the square root of 17 is the, the radius for that in polar form. And then the angle for that right there is just the arctangent. So theta would be the arctan of the y, negative 1, over the x for, and we can calculate that angle uh, on a calculator. So I can take this number 4 minus i and also write it as in its polar form, which would be uh, square root of 17 times e to the power i theta, where theta is this number right here. Now, I want to take the square root, which is the same as taking the square root of that right there. Okay. Now, square root works great with products. That means I have the square root of the square root of 17 times the square root of e to the i theta. And square root, remember, is the power 1 half. So that means, so square root of the square root, I'm just going to say that's the power of 1 half times 1 half. Right? Power to a power means multiply those powers. So that means I have 17 to the 1 fourth power, or it's the square root of the square root, or the fourth power of 17, whatever you like. And over here, I now have e to the i theta to the power 1 half power to a power is multiply those powers. So that's e to the i theta over 2. So the square root of this number right here has the square root of that length, but half the angle. So if I draw that in, what that's going to look like if we graphed it. Uh, the square root of 17, let's say square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 17 is just a little over that. And if we consider half that angle, then it's probably going to be about right there. So that's the polar or vector form of this complex number right there. And that endpoint right there is what I want to know. I want to know what x value goes with this and what multiple of i goes with that. Now, we have that right here also, because we know Euler's formula says that the e to the i angle is cosine plus i sine. So now I'm going to take 17 to the 1 fourth times the cosine of my angle which is this theta over here, cut in half, plus i times 17 to the 1 fourth times the sine of that theta over 2. So let's calculate that, see if it's in the vicinity of the point I graphed here. And then that's the answer we want here. So really, it's just an application of Euler's theorem, noting that the square root of a number in complex form means you just Want, in polar form, you just want half the angle and the square root of the radius. All right, so let's do this on Desmos. Yes, thank you, my battery is low. I think I can make it a few more minutes. All right, so let's see, we want, let's see, what am I in? I am in Desmos here, and do I need, doesn't matter if I'm in radians or degrees, that's nothing to do with this. So my angle, let's call that A, is going to be the arc tan. The original angle was negative 1 over 4 inside the arc tan. Okay, so that's giving me a negative. It looks like I am in degree mode. Yep, that's 
okay. Looking back at my picture. All right, so this angle right here for the green line from the x-axis is about negative 14 degrees. Sure, looks good. And back here, our new angle for the square root is going to be half of that. So just cut that in half. That gives me an angle about, of about a negative seven. Now the coordinates of that point, right? The real part is just gonna be that 17 to the one fourth power, which is the square root of the square root. times the cosine of that new angle, which I called A. And so that says my X value should be two. No, 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 that can't be right. Did I type something wrong there? It does not look like two in my picture. Okay, let's keep going. And then 17 raised to the power one fourth times the sine of that angle A. That two does not look right. This might be right. Okay, what did I do? Type something wrong? Let's see, we have the original value is four i. So one, two, three, four, down, a minus i, down i. Okay, that's good. And then the radius there should be 16, four squared plus negative one squared, which is 17 inside the square root. That's correct. All right, so that's my original r here. Oh, maybe I'm off about the square root of 17. No, square. Root. Oh, I'm taking the square root of the square root of 17. Square root of 17 is the original length. I want the square root of that. Okay, so my, my picture here is incorrect. So I was taking basically this same length here. and trying to plot it there. I see what I did wrong. So my picture is messed up. Let's clean that up. Delete, delete. Ooh, shit, what did I just do? Whoa, that was weird. Let's delete just that. So the length of the square root of the vector is that square root of the square root of 17. So that's what my picture should have shown. So that would be the 17 raised to the power one fourth. So that length should be about 2.03. So again, my point is if the length of this green line is the square root of 17, right? That's my, the length of my complex number here from the pull then its square root should have a shorter length, which is around two. So that's gonna put me around here-ish. So this is the new polar complex vector right there that I was trying to calculate. So this red thing here, that right there is the square root of four minus i. And I think that square root is this in component form. Here's the x value. And here's the y value. And the trick is, and there's a formula in the book about this, uh, if you take any complex number, a plus bi, and you raise that to any power and a square root is the power, then what you're gonna get is you're gonna get the magnitude of that vector r to the power n times the cosine of the angle that original vector made theta over n plus i sine of theta, uh, no, n times theta, sorry. Our n happened to be one half.
So in particular, applying that formula to the square root, square root is the power one half. So we're going to get whatever the length of the original vector was, that's r to the one half times cosine. My n is one half. So there's my half theta plus i sine of one half theta. So again, just an application of this special version. Euler's formula applied to powers way easier with the polar notation.